Special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gear Tofu here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the T-62. The T-62 is a Soviet main battle tank that was first introduced in 1961 as a further development of the T-55 series. The T-62 retained many similar design elements of its predecessor including low profile and thick turret armor. In contrast with previous tanks which were armed with rifle tank guns, the T-62 was the first production tank armed with a smoothbore tank gun that could fire the APF SDS rounds at a higher velocity. While the T-62 became the standard tank in the Soviet arsenal, it did not fully replace the T-55 in export markets due to its higher manufacturing costs and maintenance requirements compared to its predecessor. Although it was replaced by later models and successor states of the Soviet Union, the T-62 remains in use by multiple other countries as a reserve for equipment um, and as a reserve for equipment in Russia. Design features of the T-62 became standardized in subsequent Soviet and Russian mass-produced tanks. So yeah, the T-62 here, a very cool tank and kind of just the line and evolution of the main battle tanks of Russia. Um, Kind of supports the standard design they've been going through for just kind of round turret and low profile type tanks compared to the uh, tanks of the western um, world uh, but it's a really cool tank and a really awesome kind of i guess mid cold war uh tank if you're uh, really trying to find a build that would work for that and this series is going to be that perfect build before we go ahead and jump into it though i do want to go ahead and give a special links to patreon supporter owen bross for making this tutorial possible and as always if you are interested feel free to check my patreon page uh, by becoming a patron you do earn the benefit of having a vehicle request per month for your patron and um all that stuff and it does all support the uh, channel and kind of the continued videos so definitely feel free to check that out if you're interested in that program uh with that though let's go and dive in here taking a look at the t62 now i believe the version we have in front of us here is the t6 is just the t62 um so this is pretty much the main kind of i guess variant the um one you're going to probably see the most of when you look up pictures of a t62 uh but this year basically has its uh main gun here and then we have our uh, Dishko machine gun mounted up on top here, very standard on most of our Soviet main battle tanks. It's got a lot of little lights of uh, light right here and also that. Imagine some infrared um, and night vision type stuff going on with that. Uh, driver's viewports, uh, again, the front of the tank here, nothing too crazy. As you'll see with the tank, though, it does have a very low profile. I mean, you compare this to other tanks that are it's usually still a little bit higher. This one here is definitely a very low profile tank. Um, lots of good detail around the turret. Um, you know, lots of cool stuff going on with it. And then further back here, we do have the kind of, I guess, engine deck or um, the area above the engine and all of its vents and all that stuff. And we do have some external fuel tanks mounted on the back here, which are optional. And then also the ditching log that are very typical for Soviet tanks to carry. Um, overall, really a uh, cool looking build and Shimmick, and again, an awesome addition for any kind of mid Cold War type scenarios where you're gonna have the uh, Russians or Soviet Union involved. With that though, let's go ahead and move into our tutorial by beginning for our first layer. All right guys, so going ahead and moving into our uh, first layer here, we will be going ahead and starting off with layer one here. Now the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're gonna place down a row two of polish, or not polish, but uh, black shulker boxes across like this. And we're gonna go ahead and place down a row two and never break up sound stairs going across the front there. We're gonna go ahead and place down two rows of two of polished black stone stairs, as well as again two uh, black shulker boxes bottom to bottom there. We then want to go ahead and grab our dark oak with trap doors. We're going to place down um, a uh, row of two of dark oak with trap doors. We're going to go and take our black shulker boxes and we're going to do the same thing here, a row of two. And then again, our dark oak with trap doors, a row of two. And then again, our uh, black shulker boxes, a row of two across. On the back here, we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow brick, a row of two narrow brick slabs and then two narrow brick top slabs. We're going to go ahead and then place down a green shulker box or or we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to leave that as is for right now. So we're going to get to this point here. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some dark oak wood slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three across from that narrow brick slab there. And then we're going to place down three across from this narrow brick stair. And we can go ahead and then fill the inside in here with our narrow brick top slabs to go ahead and create the um, base here of the tank. So we'll just fill this in completely like so. And then on the on the sorry on the back of the tank here, so this side here, we're gonna place down two item frames, and in those item frames, we're gonna place down trip bar hooks, and make sure that those trip bar hooks are rotated to face downwards, like so. 
We're gonna go ahead and place down two Nurbic top slabs and basically just repeat our same design we did for the tracks over on the left side, just over here to this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this a little bit quicker as I've already kind of covered the tracks in detail on the other side and it's the exact same thing. We are just repeating over to both sides. So just like this, and then we have our narrow brick stairs, which are going to be two narrow brick upside down stairs. Now at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves item frames again, and we're going to go ahead and go to each one of the black shulker boxes. We're going to place down an item frame on the end here, and we're going to go ahead and place down a green stained glass pane in the item frame. If you're on Java, you also can place down a dark liquid button on the side of those shulker boxes as well. Java is the only version that allows item frames and buttons in the same block space, so if you are on a version other than Java, you'll have to just settle with just the item frames. Uh, with that done, we're going to then do the same thing over here on this side, and this right here will complete our um, road wheels here for the vehicle. Now we do have this section here where we have those two polished blackstone stairs, and we are going to go ahead and expand upon that. For this, we will be going ahead and using a design of two banners, and I'll go ahead and show you guys the banners here. They're really simple. They're going to be green banners that you're going to start with. So you're going to have two green banners. You're going to split both banners in half with black dye. So one will have a line of black dye going vertically on the left side, and then the other one will have a line for going vertically on the right side. Then you'll just take a black dye again, put each banner back into the loom, and you'll just do horizontal lines across the center there, and you are pretty much done. It's really straightforward, really simple to do, and you're just going to place them on the polished blackstone stairs like this with the green portion facing toward each other. Again, really simple stuff. That will be done to both sides there, and once you have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer one. Again, here is an aerial overview of what it looks like from the top down view, and with that, uh, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number two. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down two green chocolate boxes, which are going to be uh, basically bottom to bottom on top of these narrow brick slabs like so. And then going forward from we're going to place down a row of two of narrow brick walls like so. We also want to go ahead and take dark liquid signs, and on the front or the side here facing forward, we're going to go ahead and place down dark liquid signs on the side here of these walls. So just like this. In the space in between those walls, we're going to go ahead and then take dark liquid slabs, and we're just going to place down a row of uh, two going across like that. And we're going to go ahead and also place down item frames, and then trip our hooks in those item frames, which we're going to go ahead and rotate so that they point downwards. And same thing over here. So just like that. And then once we have that done, we're going to take our green terracotta, and we're going to go ahead and fill in a space of green terracotta between the shulker boxes, so a row of three across. After we have that done there, we're going to place down an Arabic top slab to both sides, and then going back, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Arabic slabs. Same thing over here on this side. And we will also, after we have those Arabic slabs done, we're going to place down two dark liquid signs on the two Arabic slabs on both ends. So, just like this here, two both ends, like that. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down an Arabic top slab here. And then going over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a green terracotta then, and we're just going to go and fill in the inside here with green terracotta, just like this. And once we have that finished there, um, we're going to go ahead and then place down one more additional row going all the way across this space here. Now on the ends here, we're going to take our green um, our green uh, shulker boxes. We're going to place it down to both ends. We're going to place down an item frame. On both ends there, in those item frames, we're going to place down a green terracotta. And again, for my Java players, we'll place down a dark liquid button there if you are in Java. And same thing over here. And then also in the front here, we're going to place down an item frame cobweb. And again, for Java, a button in the on that block as well. So, same thing here. Like so. Now, after we have that done there, on the very back, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some spruce wood. Um and also, or some spruce wood slabs, some narrow brick walls, and we're also going to need some green stained glass panes here. We're going to place down a total of three green stained glass panes down the center here, and then narrow brick walls to both sides like that. And then we're going to take our spruce slabs, and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five top slabs across. On the ends, we're going to place down a player head. And then along the side there of the logs, or the slabs, we're going to go ahead and also place down spruce wood signs, going all the way across those slabs like that. And after we have that all done there, that is going to wrap up what we have for that. And that is going to uh, conclude layer number two for the build. Again, here is an aerial overview, what it looks like from a top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number... Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to start with, we're going to take our green carpets. We're going to place on two on top of these narrow brick walls. 
And we're also going to place down a redstone comparator here, as well as a dark oak trapdoor to the side of the comparators. Once we have uh, that all done there, we're going to go ahead and also place down a dark oak fence gate here, open that toward the front of the tank, an item frame, and then a snowball in the item frame like so. Uh, we're going to go then place down a dark oak slab there in the center, and then to the side of that, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab, and then over here, we're going to place down one and two dark oak slabs, and then over here, just one. We're also going to place down an item frame that's going to come off that slab, as well as a black bed in the item frame, which we're going to rotate sideways. Again, for my Java players, we're going to go ahead and also grab a spruce wood sign, and we're just going to place on the side here of that, like so. Now, with that all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab our daylight detectors. We're going to place down two along the side here. This trap door will open, so make sure you do close that again. Then we're going to place down three green terracotta blocks across the center, a dark oak slab on both ends here, and then a green bed over here on the left side. After we have that done, going back from the green bed, we're going to place down two spruce wood slabs, which will also be followed with two spruce wood signs on the side of the spruce wood slabs. So like that. Then uh, over on the other side of the vehicle, uh, we're going to go ahead and very simply just place down a narrow brick wall or sorry, Nurbic slab, and not like that, but like this, and then a dark oak trap door. We'll take our green terracotta, we're going to place down two rows of five going across, and we'll make this three rows of five, so one more going back. Then at this point here, we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall to both corners, or both sides there, row of three green terracotta across the center, and then taking our dark oak stairs, we're going to place down one, two, three across the back here, as well as a dark oak slab on both ends. Now on the right side here, uh, to go ahead and continue our kind of cargo compartments and stuff like that on the side of the tank, we're going to place down a um, dark oak wood trap door here, and then we're going to place down two green beds that just go back like so, then a dark oak wood trap door, and then we'll take some green carpet, and we're just going to place down a green carpet on top of this wall. Now on the other side here, it's uh, obviously going to be a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and do our spruce wood technique again. So we're going to place down two spruce wood slabs here. Again, signs on the side of those slabs. And then we want to go ahead and take our green bed. We're going to place down a green bed right here. And there's a spruce wood slab and there's a spruce wood sign on the side there. Um, after we have that all done there, we want to go ahead and place down a dark oak trap door and a green carpet like that going back. Uh, with that all done, uh, we then want to place down a dark oak slab here in the center. Two spruce wood slabs to the sides there like that. Uh, once we have that all finished there, we're going to go ahead and place down a deep slate tile. Black bed to both ends. And then we're just going to place down a row of five of deep slate tiles across. Now with that all done, we want to go and then take a green choker box. We're going to place down two um, like this to both sides. We're going to have that space of one there in the middle. Now coming off the green choker boxes, we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves levers. We're going to place down a row of levers across. And we then want to go ahead and make sure that these levers are activated so that they face downwards like that. Once we have that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab a item frame, place it on the side here. Green or uh, green terracotta block in the item frame, and same thing over here. So just like that, and that will finish off those, um, you know, optional fuel tanks there on the back. Um, anyways, though, that is going to conclude everything for layer three. Um, here is a overview for what it looks like from the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place down a piston on top of this block here. And we're going to go ahead and take our dark oak slabs, and we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven slabs forward. We're going to go to the bottom of these two slabs here, place down trap doors, and then dark oak with signs on the side here of these slabs. After we have that done, we want to go and then take our dark oak with slabs, we're going to go ahead and go two more forward, and then a polished blackstone slab there on the very tip. Now, after that is done, we're going to go ahead and then take a dark oak with slab, we'll place it to both sides of that um, piston. And then once we have that done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak fence gate, uh, which will be coming off this slab here, open it toward the slab. Then over here, we're going to place down an item frame. And in that item frame, we're going to place down a black concrete block. And again, for Java players, we'll place a dark oak sign on the side there like so. Now, with that all done there, we want to go ahead and then place down a green terracotta block behind the piston, as well as we can go ahead and at this point use end portal frames. Now, you can use end portal frames for this section here. However, um, there's like this canvas type material, and I think the gray works pretty good at kind of showing this canvas area that is around the um, kind of gun uh, the gun mechanism and all that stuff. So that's why we chose a piston and we will be going ahead and modifying it with a tool. So if you're not on Java, I would probably recommend just going ahead and using the end portal frames instead. But for Java players, I would use the piston and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, anyways though, after that though, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a dark oak slab to both ends. 
After that's done, we're going to take our green terracotta, we're going to place it on our row of three across, and we're going to go ahead and then take our dark oak stairs and place a dark oak stair to both ends. We're also going to place down a dark oak corner stair going back from those stairs, as well as a narrow row of three of green terracotta across. And we then want to go ahead and place down a spruce wood stair here in the center, dark oak wood fence gate, or dark oak wood corner stair to both ends. Now, on the very back here, this is also kind of an optional thing. I went ahead and placed down a row of three of uh, the strip birch uh, logs. I think it looks pretty good and works pretty nice for the build. And I went ahead and just placed down some dark oak buttons to kind of show like some uh, cabling or whatever wrapping it into that bundle. Now, once we have uh, that all complete there, that is pretty much it for the main portion for this layer. At this point in time, if you are on Java, we're going to type in the command slash give space app p minecraft colon debug underscore sticks. This command here, press enter will you get this glowing stick. We're going to go and just give a nice little right click there to the uh, piston in the front there and it will get rid of it and um, all that. Or get rid of that wood portion in. It looks nice there, kind of helps uh, have a show a little contrast of color where that canvas material would be. Now the next kind of portion here is going to be kind of a Java feature that's going to look really good on Java. Um, on other versions, you're going to have to do something a little bit different. So when it comes to this, um, you can have the option of placing down zombie heads and then an end rod, and then we're going to place down an end rod here. Or the other option here for Java players is we're going to build a block, a space from these slabs and the stair right here. We're going to place down tripwire hooks in those spaces, come off the side of those blocks, and then we're going to left click with our debug stick, and we're going to go to selected facing. We'll right click these and rotate these around until they come off those stairs and slabs. And then we can just go ahead and throw a end rod there in between them and then an end rod come off this corner stair. So it's going to basically help kind of form this little rack system that goes around. And again, if you're on Java, I'd recommend the tripwire hooks. If you're not on Java, the zombie heads might be your best bet to go. Um, anyways, though, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for this layer. And um, actually, one uh, quick thing I do want to cover also is we are going to place down a dark liquid sign right here. Um, anyways, though, once you're done with that, that is going to wrap up everything for layer number four. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers. Moving into our next layer, we move it into layer number five and uh, six, seven, and eight. So for these layers here to start with, we're going to place down a dark oak slab on top of this fence gate here. We're going to place down an item frame. And then in that item frame, we want to go ahead and place down a, um, what is going to be a white stained glass pane. So just like that for this optics here. Then after we get that done there, we're going to go ahead and place down two daylight detectors here in the center. To the left side, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab. To the right side, we're going to place down a spruce wood trap door. We'll then place down a dark oak wood fence gate here, have this opened up toward the slab. Then a dark oak wood slab on top of that. Or sorry, dark oak wood fence, or dark oak wood trap door. Then an item frame, and then in that item frame, we're going to go ahead and place down a red apple. So just like that. Then we want to go ahead and go to... Uh, the side here of the fence post and all that we're going to place down an end rod and then we're going to go up with one two and three iron bars like that for the radio antenna on this back section here we're also going to place down a zombie head on top of the stair so it's going to look like that there now once we have that done uh we want to go ahead and then place down our gun so for our dish gun machine gun pretty simple we're going to go ahead and grab an anvil a polished blackstone slab uh some dark oak signs a end rod a chain a wither skeleton skull, a grindstone, and we're also going to go ahead and need a black bed here, uh, which will be used in the item frame. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is, here is we're going to place down an anvil like this. We're going to go ahead and then go forward, or rather sorry, the anvil is going to go on top of this stair here. Then we're going to place down a top slab of polished black stone, a dark oak with sign on the right side. On the left side here we're going to place down an item frame, and then in that item frame we're going to place down a black bed rotated sideways. Again for my Java players we'll place a dark oak with sign on the side there of that slab as well. Then come off the pist or the anvil here, we're going to place down a grindstone that's going to fill this space here. And then on top of the uh, anvil, we're also going to go ahead and place down a zombie head, like that. Then going forward from this, we're going to place down an end rod, chain, and a wither skeleton skull to go ahead and make our disco machine gun for the top there of the tank. And after that is done, I believe that's pretty much it for the build. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything, and everything really does appear to be good to go. So we're going to go ahead and call that good, and that's it for layers 5. And anyways, guys, that right there is going to conclude my tutorial here for the T62 main battle tank. Hope you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This has been linked from a sign of the build, to my channel, or this video, if this does appear on social media sites. As always, you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Again, the big special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible, and as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is
is always in my video descriptions. With that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2 by 4 and I'll see you guys next time.